I was I was scared to death. I had, yeah. uh, I had done a taxi a long time before, yeah. but I hadn't done a sitcom, and, and, and so I was really nervous. When Tom Selleck and Sam Elliott initially crossed paths in the world of cinema more than five decades ago, little did they anticipate the parallel trajectories that awaited them as titans of the Western genre. Selleck himself recalls noticing Elliott's unwavering sense of self and a crystal-clear sense of direction that fueled his meteoric ascent. Over the years, their collaborative journey, evolving from early roles as budding cowboys to revered figures entrenched in cowboy folklore, validates Selleck's enduring appreciation for Elliott's inherent strengths. Let's embark on a journey as we delve into the intertwined narratives of these Hollywood comrades, starting with their individual stories. Tom Selleck's story. Tom Selleck was born in 1945 in Detroit, Michigan, to Martha and Robert Dean Selleck. Martha was a housewife, and Robert worked as an executive and real estate investor. He grew up with an elder brother named Robert, a younger sister named Martha, and a younger brother named Daniel. Their lineage primarily consists of English descent, with a hint of German ancestry. Selleck's family shifted to Sherman Oaks, California, in 1948. For education, Selleck completed his schooling at Grant High School in 1962. Initially, he attended Los Angeles Valley College, focusing on saving money by living at home. Later, during his junior year, he transferred to the University of Southern California to play basketball for the USC Trojans. Apart from basketball, he was involved in baseball as a pitcher and designated hitter. Selleck was part of the Sigma Chi fraternity and the Trojan Knights. Although majoring in business administration, a drama coach's suggestion prompted him to delve into acting, leading him to drop out in his senior year and study acting under Milton Katsilis at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. During the Vietnam War, when drafted, Selleck joined the California National Guard, serving in the 160th Infantry Regiment from 1967 to 1973. His career took off gradually, commencing with appearances on shows like The Dating Game in the mid-60s. He ventured into commercials for various brands and had minor roles in films like Myra Breckenridge, Coma, and The Seven Minutes. Additionally, he was featured in TV series and movies, which helped him establish himself as the face for products like Salem Cigarettes and Revlon's Chaz Cologne, and appearing in commercials for Right Guard Deodorant, Dubonnet, close-up toothpaste, and safeguard deodorant soap. His acting career diversified with roles in Daughters of Satan and The Rockford Files. An enthusiast for the outdoors and firearms, Selleck ventured into leading man cowboy roles in westerns, starring in movies like The Sackets, Concrete Cowboys, The Shadow Riders, Lassiter, Quigley Down Under, and Last Stand at Sabre River. His portrayal of Oren Sackett in The Sackets earned him recognition, and his role in Last Stand at Sabre River won him a Western Heritage Award. Tom Selleck hit it big time when he landed the leading role as Thomas Magnum in Magnum P.I. It was a game changer, but it meant he had to pass on playing Indiana Jones in Raiders of the Lost Ark, which ultimately went to Harrison Ford. Initially, the delay in filming the Magnum pilot due to a writer's strike could have given him the chance to complete Raiders. In an interview, Selleck reflected on the decision, stating how sticking to his magnum commitment turned out to be the best move for him. He mentioned that even when some suggested extreme measures to back out and take on Raiders, he held firm, honoring his word to the magnum team. As Thomas Magnum, a former U.S. Navy SEAL turned private investigator in Hawaii, Selleck brought charisma to the role. The show ran from 1980 to 1988, bagging him an Emmy Award in 1984. His trademark mustache, Aloha shirts, and Detroit Tigers baseball cap became iconic in the series. Post-Magnum Selleck's career continued to soar. He steered clear of the role of Mitch Buchanan in Baywatch, not wanting to be typecast as a sex symbol, which later went to David Hasselhoff. He showcased his versatility in movies like Runaway, Three Men and a Baby, and her alibi, and notably his first portrayal of a gay character in In and Out. The 90s saw Selleck diversifying further. He explored roles in Friends as Monica's older boyfriend, landing an Emmy Award nomination. 
His voice graced Atten-T's futuristic You Will ad campaigns. He delved into educational TV, hosting a series about the universe, and later starred in the short-lived sitcom The Closer. His cowboy roles didn't end either. He starred in Quigley Down Under and remained active on TV in various movies and series. Selleck's turn as General Dwight D. Eisenhower in Ike Countdown to D-Day garnered critical acclaim. From 2005, Selleck embraced the role of Jesse Stone in a series of TV movies based on Robert B. Parker's novels. He found a regular slot on Las Vegas, took on roles in Coldwell Banker and AAG's commercials, and became a fixture on Blue Bloods, where he portrays police commissioner Frank Reagan. In 2021, Selleck showcased his musical talents, making his album debut singing Yes Sir, That's My Baby with Nicholas King. As you can probably tell, throughout his career, Selleck has worn many hats, proving himself an enduring figure in entertainment. But what about his personal life? Between 1971 and 1982, Selleck tied the knot with model Jacqueline Ray. During this period, he embraced fatherhood, adopting her son, Kevin Shepard, born in 1966, who later ventured into drumming for the American rock band Tonic. Then, on August 7, 1987, Selleck exchanged vows with Jilly Joan Mack, born in 1957. Their union bore a daughter, Hannah, on December 16, 1988. The Selleck household nestles near Thousand Oaks Westlake Village, California, occupying a 60-acre avocado ranch in Hidden Valley, once belonging to Dean Martin. Beyond his acting prowess, Selleck boasts skills in indoor and beach volleyball. As an outside hitter for the Outrigger Canoe Club in Honolulu, he demonstrated his talent on the court. His son Kevin, a volleyball team All-American at USC, shared Selleck's passion for the sport. Dennis Berg, Selleck's teammate at the club, praised his dedication and patience, reminiscing about the camaraderie and spirited matches. An ardent fan of ice hockey, Selleck frequents Los Angeles Kings games at the Staples Center, particularly admiring players like Anze Kopitar and Alexander Frolov. His affinity for baseball is evident, having once been a minority owner of the Detroit Tigers, his cherished childhood team. Selleck's involvement in the sport transcended ownership. He actively participated, hitting a batting practice home run while training with the Tigers in 1986. His preparation for the film Mr. Baseball involved reaching out to the Tigers, practicing extensively, and even making an appearance as a pinch hitter in an exhibition game against Cincinnati, an experience that significantly enriched his portrayal in the movie. Colleague Larry Minetti in his memoir Aloha Magnum lauded Selleck for his remarkable dedication on the set of Magnum, his charitable endeavors in Hawaii, and his unwavering support for the show's crew. Selleck's commitment extended beyond his acting career. In February 2009, he became the national spokesman for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, advocating for the Education Center construction on the National Mall. Following the passing of James Garner, Selleck paid tribute to the late actor, reflecting on their bond and mentorship. However, Selleck humbly disavowed the role of mentor, despite the perception held by others, acknowledging the flattering sentiment but declining the label. Simultaneously, however, Sam Elliott's journey was much different from Selleck's. Sam Elliott's story. Sam Elliott was born on August 9, 1944, at Sutter Memorial Hospital in Sacramento, California. His parents, Glenn Mamie and Henry Nelson Elliott, hailed from El Paso, Texas. Glenn was a former diving champ and later became a high school teacher, while Henry worked with the Department of the Interior. Interestingly, Sam's lineage is traced back to an ancestor who played a pivotal role as a surgeon in the Battle of San Jacinto. When Sam was 13, his family relocated from California to Portland, Oregon. Growing up, Sam spent his teenage years in Northeast Portland, attending David Douglas High School, graduating in 1962. Post-high school, he began his college journey at the University of Oregon, pursuing English and psychology. However, he made a detour, dropping out after two terms. Yet his passion for acting led him to Clark College in Vancouver, Washington, where he completed a two-year program and was inspired to pursue acting professionally after a standout role in Guys and Dolls. After a hiatus, 
He re-enrolled at the University of Oregon but faced another setback, dropping out after his father's passing. Sam Elliott's journey into acting defied his father's advice, who believed he should prioritize obtaining a college degree. Despite his father's skepticism, Sam moved to Los Angeles to pursue his Hollywood dreams in the late 60s. Working construction and serving in the California Air National Guard while studying acting, he remembered his father's realism, hard work ethic, and the lessons learned from him, shaping his work ethos. His acting career took flight as a character actor, perfectly suited for Western roles due to his appearance, voice, and demeanor. From his early television role in Judd for the Defense to appearing in Lancer and Mission Impossible, Elliot's career burgeoned. Notably, he played a card player witnessing Robert Redford's Sundance Kid's skill in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and essayed significant roles in commercials and television films, including portraying Charles Wood in I Will Fight No More Forever. His portrayal of Sam Damon in the miniseries Once an Eagle and the lead in Lifeguard marked pivotal moments, showcasing his versatility. However, some critiques deemed the latter film less satisfying. In 1977, Elliot took on the role of Tom Keating in the miniseries Aspen. His acting prowess shone in various productions, including portraying an abusive wife killer in Murder in Texas, co-starring with Farrah Fawcett and his future wife Catherine Ross. Another notable performance was alongside Cheryl Ladd in A Death in California. Collaborating with Tom Selleck, he appeared in Louis L'Amour adaptations like The Sackets and The Shadow Riders. But his acting journey was diverse, from playing opposite Cher in Mask to his heartwarming portrayal as a tough yet endearing father figure in the Christmas film Prancer. Elliot's TV appearances extended to various shows like Felony Squad, Gunsmoke, Lancer, and Hawaii Five-0, along with notable roles in TV movies such as Buffalo Girls, where he embodied Wild Bill Hickok. The scope of Elliot's roles expanded over time. He notably portrayed Sam Houston in Gone to Texas, delving into the life of the influential figure. His role as Wade Garrett, a bouncer and mentor in Roadhouse in 1989 alongside Patrick Swayze, showcased his versatility. Louis L. Amour's novel adaptations continued with Conagher, where Elliot and Catherine Ross starred together. His portrayal of Brigadier General John Buford in Gettysburg and Virgil Earp in Tombstone added depth to his repertoire. His distinctive voice narrated The Big Lebowski in 1998 as The Stranger. His later career encompassed a wide array of projects, from the poignant Thank You for Smoking in 2005 to his animated role as Ben the Cow in Barnyard in 2006. Elliot's involvement in Ghost Rider and The Golden Compass added to his eclectic resume. Notably, he portrayed Phil Milstein in Grace and Frankie's second season and voiced Buster in Marmaduke in 2010. Again, Elliot's career enjoyed a resurgence with roles like Lee Hayden in The Hero in 2017 a role that garnered critical acclaim for encapsulating his iconic traits. He further captivated audiences in The Man Who Killed Hitler and Then the Bigfoot in the same year. His performance as Bobby Maine in A Star Is Born in 2018 earned him accolades, including a National Board of Review Award and his Maiden Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. So now that you know all about the stories of Selleck and Elliot, how exactly did their paths cross? Lancer in the late 60s, both Tom Selleck and Sam Elliott embarked on their acting journeys, making early appearances on the Western TV series Lancer. Selleck, then a fresh face in the acting scene, had a minor role, followed by Elliott's guest appearance in the same season. Those initial steps on Lancer hinted at the future cowboy stardom these two actors would eventually achieve. On the show, Elliott portrayed Renslow, a settler who encounters the main characters after his horse is stolen. Little did they know these budding performances would pave the way for their future prominence in Western cinema. Reflecting on those days, Selleck admired Elliot's resolute determination and clear aspirations. At the time, both actors were part of a talent development program at Fox Studios, aiming to cultivate future TV leads. Selleck acknowledged his ongoing learning process in contrast to Elliot's evident command of the craft and a well-defined vision for his career. The Sackets In 1979, 
a made-for-television Western film called The Sackets emerged, directed by Robert Totten and starring Sam Elliott, Tom Selleck, Jeff Osterhage, and Glenn Ford. Adapted from Louis L'Amour's novels The Daybreakers and Sackett, the film narrates the journey of the Sackett brothers in 1869, departing from their Tennessee roots to forge a new life in Santa Fe. The plot follows three brothers, Tell, Oren, and Tyrell Sackett, brought together by a tragic incident at Oren's wedding. Tell, a rugged mountain man played by Elliot, reunites with his family after nearly a decade, while Oren, a former lawman played by Selleck, aims to settle down. Tyrell, the youngest, possesses remarkable skill with a revolver. During Oren's wedding, Long Higgins disrupts the ceremony, seeking revenge for a past confrontation with Oren. Tragically, Oren's fiancé is killed in the fight, prompting Tyrell to intervene and shoot Long. After the funeral, their mother urges Oren to join Tyrell and locate Tell, suggesting they seek a fresh start out west. Tell finds work in a Texas mining camp but leaves after a confrontation ends in a deadly shooting. Meanwhile, Tyrell joins a cattle drive, befriending Cap Roundtree and Tom Sunday. Oren later catches up and joins the group. Their journey takes them to Abilene, Kansas, where they encounter romantic interests and become embroiled in disputes between wealthy landowners in Santa Fe, New Mexico. As the brothers reunite in the Colorado town of Purgatory, Cap and Tell venture off in search of gold, while Oren, Terrell, and Sunday pursue their plan to gather wild cattle on their way to Santa Fe. However, their departure brings Ira Bigelow, seeking vengeance against Tell, into the town. In the heart of Elizabethtown, New Mexico, Tell and Cap find themselves facing off against a young gunslinger named Kid Newton. But instead of resorting to bullets, Tell diffuses the situation by talking Newton down and persuading him to walk away. Newton, later on, aligns himself with Ira Bigelow in his relentless pursuit of Tell. Journeying towards Santa Fe, Sunday, Oren and Terrell stumble upon a harrowing scene, a family slain by Indians. Amidst the tragedy, they discover a safe box holding a thousand dollars, sparking a heated debate between Oren and Sunday. Oren insists on honoring the deceased by sending the money to their kin, while Sunday opts to split the cash among themselves. Choosing to return the money, tensions rise, straining the relationship between Oren and Sunday. Cap and Tell come across Ange Carey in the mountainous terrain, a woman lost in the wilderness. A dire situation unfolds when Ira Bigelow and his men attack Tell's camp, injuring Cap and trapping them in the caves. As Oren and Sunday vie for the position of town sheriff, Pritz exposes Sunday's troubled past, leading to Sunday's public embarrassment and growing animosity towards Oren. The discord escalates when Sunday accuses Oren of betrayal, staunchly rejecting any attempts at reconciliation, even when offered the role of deputy. Following Don Luis's passing, Oren and Terrell unearth Pritz's treacherous schemes. Oren sets his sights on becoming the town's mayor, and tensions peak during a confrontation between Sunday and Oren, culminating in Terrell fatally shooting Sunday while defending his brother. Trapped within the confines of the caves, Cap remains incapacitated while Ange races to seek aid for the Sackets. Eventually, Tell and Cap break free setting the stage for an intense showdown between the Sacketts and the Bigelows. Cap allies with the Sackett brothers, and the ensuing clash culminates in the defeat of the Bigelow gang, concluding with a united departure down the street. The film had plenty of room for both Selleck and Elliot to test their limits and their acting abilities, but more importantly, this is where they began to get to know each other better. The Shadow Riders. When it comes to Western films, some have thrived with a single hero like Gary Cooper or Clint Eastwood leading the charge, but many iconic movies in the genre owe their success to the chemistry between their stars. Take Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, where Robert Redford and Paul Newman's pairing elevated the film. Likewise, Rio Bravo banked on the trio of John Wayne, Dean Martin, and Walter Brennan to secure its place as a cinematic gem. Pairing up actors in a Western flick isn't a simple task, they must complement each other's talents and display diverse aspects of their personalities. They must play characters that contrast, or else the dynamic might fall flat. In the underrated TV western The Shadow Riders, the collaboration of Elliot and Selleck proved to be remarkably effective. 
The Shadow Riders was adapted from Louis L'Amour's novel, maintaining the Western essence rather than becoming a watered-down version for TV. Helmed by seasoned Western director Andrew Vive McLaglin, known for his work with John Wayne, the film embraced a more mature approach to the adventure of the two main characters. Balancing crowd-pleasing humor and adventure, it offered a nuanced portrayal of post-Civil War America. The narrative revolves around Brothers Mack, played by Selleck, and Dal Traven, portrayed by Elliot, who fought for opposite sides in the Civil War. While Mack sided with the Union, Dal stayed loyal to his Texan roots and the Confederacy. Despite their allegiances, politics take a back seat in the story. Dal's genuine aversion to slavery and Confederate soldiers in their hometown illustrates his impartiality. The film commences with Dal narrowly escaping an encounter with Confederate militia leaders, saved only by Mac's swift intervention. The plot deepens when they discover a ruthless kidnapping orchestrated by Major Cooper Ashbury. Their sisters, brother Jesse, and Dal's girlfriend Kate fall victim to this heinous act, setting the tone for a graver turn of events. Though not as stark as revisionist westerns, The Shadow Riders surprises with its boldness, considering it aired on network TV. This distressing incident propels the brothers on a gripping quest, fueling the film's momentum. The dynamic between Elliot and Selleck in The Shadow Riders offers an intriguing twist from what audiences might expect. Selleck, often seen as the solemn lawman in shows like Blue Bloods or the Jesse Stone franchise, surprises viewers by portraying Mac as the comedic relief. The film playfully introduces Mac, lounging with his girlfriend, hinting at a more lighthearted persona. Throughout, Mac teases his brother, emphasizing their shared inability to settle down. This carefree, almost whimsical nature starkly contrasts with Selleck's other roles. Conversely, Elliot, known for later roles in lighter action flicks like The Big Lebowski and Roadhouse, brings depth to Dal's character. Dal's genuine affection for Kate adds tension to the plot. He envisions a future with her and is disheartened by her decision not to wait for him during his wartime service. Their reunification brings authentic, heartfelt conversations, revealing the complexities of their relationship. Elliot's performance in The Shadow Riders showcases emotional depth, even as he expressed reservations about modernizing the Western genre, as seen in his remarks on The Power of the Dog. Despite its acclaim as an underrated gem, The Shadow Riders fell short of achieving genuine classic status, partly due to its TV medium in the 80s. Back then, television was often deemed inferior to film. However, the changing landscape, with streaming platforms becoming havens for creative projects, altered perceptions. Elliot's outstanding performance in the Yellowstone spin-off series 1883, earning him a Screen Actors Guild Award, exemplified this shift. It's time for today's subscriber's pick. Well, you probably know what happens when two guys become super good friends in the film industry. While Tom Selleck confirmed the truth after working with Sam Elliott, many other people came up with their own unique truths. To any average person, Selleck and Elliott would just appear to be two talented men who respect each other's work and enjoy collaborating on projects. But when you get to the rumor mill, you realize that something else has been brewing all this time. A lot of people believe that Selleck had some real feelings for Elliot, especially after they worked on The Sackets together. According to them, these two just seem too close for it to be platonic, and the fact that they keep their bond so low-key just proves that there's something fishy behind the scenes. What do you think? Are these two just friends and colleagues? Or could they be something more? The answers await. The answer awaits. Remember to comment down below with the hashtag subscriber pick and let us know what you think. Now, on to the next topic. A bond begins to form. Tom Selleck had the chance to witness the impressive evolution of his fellow actor, Sam Elliott, as they co-starred in all these Western roles together over the years. Their initial meeting in 1969 during the TV series Lancer might not have been particularly memorable but it laid the groundwork for a lasting professional relationship that grew into something unparalleled in the Western genre. In an episode titled Death Bait, both actors, then relatively unknown and finding their footing in the industry, played minor roles, Tom Selleck as Dobie and Sam Elliott as Renslow. Although their roles were minor, 
it marked the start of their on-screen partnership. Selleck, appearing almost unrecognizable without his trademark mustache, had more screen time compared to Elliot, whose appearance was briefer. Selleck's character faced the misfortune of having his horse stolen, marking the beginning of their shared journey. Tom Selleck believed Sam Elliott was more prepared to carve out his Hollywood destiny than he was. Selleck had a lot of insightful things to say about his co-star. As their careers progressed, Selleck saw Elliott as someone with a more defined path in Hollywood. While Selleck explored various genres and mediums throughout his career, Elliott seemed to have a clearer vision of his trajectory. According to Selleck, Elliott possessed a more refined direction and purpose, a quality that Selleck greatly admired and recognized from their early days together. During their time filming Lancer, despite being close in age, Selleck, at 24, acknowledged Elliott, a year older at 25, had a sharper focus and direction for his future. A trait that stood out to Selleck from the start. In a pivotal moment auditioning for Lancer, where horse riding skills were a vital criteria, Selleck, a newcomer to the genre, admitted his lack of experience rather than fabricating his abilities like some stars do. Honesty prevailed, as Selleck candidly conveyed his willingness to learn the skill, emphasizing his athleticism and lack of fear around horses. The auditions took place at the Randall Ranch, and despite his limited equine experience, Selleck's determination shone through, earning him the role. This began Selleck's enduring acting career, sparked by a genuine moment of honesty and determination. But years before their friendship began, Selleck had already been struck by Elliot's remarkable resoluteness. Reports suggest that Selleck and Elliot's bond was fostered during The Sackets and extended to several other significant Western projects throughout the next decade. In 1982, they reunited for The Shadow Riders alongside Osterhage, portraying a fictional family navigating post-Civil War turmoil. Accounts of the production highlighted how the actors effortlessly revived their chemistry, transcending the years that had passed. Behind-the-scenes stories revealed their close rapport, with ample bonding moments during shooting breaks enhancing their on-screen synergy. Allegedly, in a scene demanding Elliot's character be thrown from a speeding wagon, he entrusted Selleck alone with the rigging of practical effects, a testament to their off-camera camaraderie. Their ease and shared brotherly dynamic, whether portraying actual siblings or variations of fraternal relationships, consistently shone through their performances. Between takes, their solidarity manifested in shared activities like cribbage games and exchanging insights on mastering Western skills. Even after decades, Selleck credited Elliot for immersing him in cowboy culture, a fluency pivotal in embodying characters like Tom Lance from Lonesome Dove. Reports suggested that if schedules had aligned, Elliot would have eagerly joined Selleck in bringing Larry McMurtry's novel to television. Although this project didn't materialize, Selleck remains open to reuniting with Elliot for the right Western project. Despite their busy careers, sources close to them claim a shared interest in a potential on-screen reunion if the perfect opportunity arises. Selleck's confirmation of the truth. Selleck and Elliot, seemingly bonded by mutual Western aspirations from their early days, purportedly uphold their friendship above all else even amid potential collaboration opportunities that may arise in the future. Tom Selleck has confirmed the truth after working with Sam Elliott, and honestly, it hasn't shocked many. Throughout the late 70s and 80s, Elliott made significant strides beyond his connection with Selleck, showcasing strengths and qualities that resonated deeply with colleagues. Reports emphasize his commanding presence and adept handling of film sets, impressing many including established stars, with his natural gravity, despite his relatively limited experience at the time. Working closely with Elliot, actors and directors praised his professionalism and commitment to authenticity, recounting his gentlemanly demeanor, supportive nature, and meticulous attention to historical details. From Laura San Giacomo's acknowledgement of his comforting presence to director Simon Winsor's admiration for Elliot's dedication to accuracy, his qualities aligned with Selleck's early observations. Witnessing Elliot's journey parallel to his own, Selleck was in awe of Elliot and the way he was treading through his career. Reflecting on their early days together, 
Selleck noted Elliot's assuredness in embodying his passions, a trait that set him apart even then. Despite Selleck's acknowledgement of his learning curve in character immersion, he admired Elliot's ability to authentically inhabit roles from a deeply rooted center, a quality that persisted through their frequent collaborations and even as Elliot navigated the evolving trends of the entertainment industry. For Selleck, Elliot's on-screen authenticity seamlessly extends from his off-screen persona, reaffirming the actor's continuous growth and self-assurance. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.